what I tell you, let the singer weave into song. What I tell you, let it flow from ear to mouth. Let it pass from old to young. My vulva, the horn, the boat of heaven, is full of eagerness like the young moon. My untilled land lies fallow. As for me, Inanna, who will plow my vulva? Who will plow my high field? Who will plow my wet ground? As for me, the young woman, who will plow my vulva? Who will station the ox there? Who will plow my vulva? Demuzi replied, Great lady, the king will plow your vulva. I, Demuzi the king, will plow your vulva. Inanna replied, Then plow my vulva, man of my heart, plow my vulva. When I have bathed for the king, when I have adorned my flanks with ointment, when I have anointed my mouth with balsamic oil and painted my eyes with coal, when he has my hips with his fair hands, the Lord who lies down beside holy Inanna, when he has relaxed in my pure arms, when he has intercourse with me like choice beer, when he ruffles my pubic hair for me, when he plays with the hair of my head, when he lays his hands on my holy genitals, when he lies down in the softness of my sweet womb, when he treats me tenderly on the bed, then I too will treat my Lord tenderly. I will decree a good fate for him. I will decree the shepherdship of all the lands as his destiny. In battle, I will be the one who goes before you. In combat, I will carry your weapon like a personal attendant. In the assembly, I will be your advocate. On campaign, I will be your encouragement. You are the pure one. You are worthy. You are worthy of sitting on the shining throne, worthy of the brilliant crown. You are worthy to delight yourself on my holy breasts like a pure calf. May your love be lasting. An has determined this for you. May he never alter it. May Enlil, the decreer of fates, never change it. Thus, Inanna treated him tenderly. I want to tell you something. Pay attention to my speech. The customs of the city of the dead are perfect. They may not be questioned.
Inanna, who has obtained her triumphant position, declares in the good place. She did cry like a birthing mom. The Anunnaki wept with her. I will have harnessed for you a chariot of lapis lazuli and gold, with wheels of gold and horns of electrum. It will be harnessed with great storming mountain mules. Come into our house with the fragrance of cedar. And when you come into the house, the doorposts and the throne dials will kiss your feet. Inanna shrieked like a woman in childbirth. The sweet-voiced mistress of the gods wailed. No sooner have I given birth to my dear people than they feel the sea like so many fish. The gods, those of the Anunnaki, were weeping with her. The gods humbly sat weeping sobbing with grief, their lips burning, parched with thirst. I name her Inanna, the first daughter of the moon. The morning and evening star Venus, eight-pointed symbol of Inanna, eighth planet in from outer space, who will be the great goddess of love and war. An, who created gods and humankind, gazed at holy Inanna. the favorite wife and mistress who travels by his side. And told of those times before the flood, in his city, Uruk, he made the walls which formed a rampart stretching on and the temple called Iana, which was the house of An, the sky god, and also of Inanna, goddess of love and battle. Look at it, even now, where Cornus runs on outer wall, shining brilliant copper. See, there is no inner wall. It has no equal. Touch the threshold, ancient. Approach the palace. There lives Inanna, goddess of love and battle. Holy Inanna had gathered up the divine powers from Enki and embarked on the boat of heaven. Inanna, lady fit for battle, who as the heroine of the battleground makes the troops dance the dance of Inanna, the goddess of numerous alien technologies holy Inanna has brought to Atra the mountain of the shining me, the great queen of heaven who rides upon the awesome, dwelling on the peaks of the bright mountain. So high did the water go that even the gods scrambled for mountains and cringed like rain-whipped dogs in the storm. The Anunnaki wept with her in regret. Inanna abandoned heaven, abandoned earth, and descended to the underworld. 
Astare, Ishtar, Inanna. Many are your names, but I know you as the eternal moment in me, my soul counterpart, lover, and beloved as one. Inanna, the daughter of the sun, arose before him like the bull in the land. Her brilliance like that of holy Shara. Her stellar brightness illuminated for him the mountain cave. At evening, the radiant star, the Venus star, the great light which fills the holy heavens. The Lady of the Evening ascends above like a warrior. The people in all the lands lift their gaze to her. As the Lady admired by the land, the Lone Star, the Venus Star. The eight-pointed star of Inanna, elevated as high as the heaven, ascends above like a warrior and all the lands tremble before her. The people bow to her. Now when Inanna, the Lady of the Gods, arrived, she lift up the magnificent jewels of An, the great god, had made according to her desire, and said, O you gods here present, just as surely as I shall not forget the lapis lazuli around my neck. So shall I remember these days, never forgetting them. Let the gods come to the offering. For Inanna, the bed of night is ready as for a god. She takes her seat high on its lapis lazuli dials. She keeps an eye on the judgments and decisions, distinguishing true and false. Inanna, you go into the interior of heaven. You appear like the moonlight in your shrine. You give judgment. You decide destinies on earth. You are the lady of all divine powers, and no deity can compete with you. In heaven, you diffuse awesomeness like fire, and when on earth, you screech like a falcon, then you dance in play. The palace is a forest, and the king is a lion. She goes to the thighs of the king. Holy Inanna rubs herself with soap and is now the lover of Anu, inciting the heart's desires. She is the eternal moment 